Welcome to this episode of Uplifting News Sleep Aid Daily, where we read you good news to fall asleep to. Today is Friday, April 17th, 2020. Our uplifting stories include Wuhan couples resume wedding preparations with gusto, Therapy Dog FaceTimes healthcare workers and delivers hero healing kits. SNL actor pays rent for everyone in the building where his grandmother lived. And a 90-year-old woman who's climbing the equivalent of a mountain to raise money for the NHS. Now, breathe in. Breathe out. and relax as we dive into these stories. Our first story is from South London Online. Wuhan couples resume wedding preparations with gusto as online marriage application system is overloaded. In Wuhan, China, weddings, birthdays, and celebrations have been all but canceled since the coronavirus pandemic took hold. Thankfully, strict lockdowns are finally being relaxed, bringing families together after a number of worrying months. Peng, a 24-year-old receptionist, and airport worker Yao, 28, have been looking forward to getting married before the pandemic brought all their plans to a stop. They were supposed to register their marriage in February. The couple decided on the second day of the month due to it being a lucky Chinese number associated with strong relationships. Then, in late January, the Chinese authorities took the step of locking down non-essential activity in Wuhan. More than 50,000 people have been infected in the city and 2,579 have died. He kept wanting to send me things to eat and drink because the lockdown meant we couldn't go out and buy things. But I was scared. Like, what if he caught something while on the way? The situation was very serious at the time, said Yao. The couple only got to see each other in person again after three months, when Peng's office began to open. I was overwhelmed with emotions, said Peng. A marriage application system run by Chinese tech platform Alipay saw so much traffic in post-lockdown China that its servers couldn't cope, according to an official update from the service. Since the lockdown started, all wedding applications and services had been postponed. Now that services are beginning again, there's likely to be another large spike in marriage applications. As for Peng and Yao, they managed to register their marriage last Saturday, one day after the marriage bureau started taking applications again. They're now making their preparations to hold a traditional feast wedding on May 2nd. Our next article is from Good Morning America by Angeline Jane Bernabe and Faith Bernstein. Therapy dog Dr. Loki delivers hero healing kits to healthcare workers. A therapy dog in Baltimore is bringing joy to the healthcare workers through digital therapy dog visits. Loki, a two-year-old Rottweiler therapy dog at the University of Maryland Medical Center, is known for comforting patients each week. But when the coronavirus pandemic prevented therapy dogs from visiting the hospital, Loki and her owner, Caroline Benzel, had to figure out a creative way to help patients. So Benzel came up with the idea of remote therapy dog visits. I'll FaceTime and Loki will go outside and sit in my mom's front yard, Benzel told GMA. She said that she tells patients to close their eyes and imagine a different scene outside the confines of the hospital. I'm outwardly talking, she said. Imagine sitting in a park and we're having a conversation so they can hear the birds, they can see the people walking by. So that's kind of how we've been doing it now. Benzel, who is now a second year medical student at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, started training Loki since she was 18 weeks old. Benzel gets Loki acclimated to the hospital's environments and patients and has described her pup as a natural at her job. I've never met a dog that's so empathetic. It's kind of strange. There have been many circumstances at the hospital where she can just read a situation where a patient is in a very bad way or a family member is going through a loss, said Benzel. Before COVID-19 hit, 
Benzel would also dress Loki in her signature white coat that was custom-made for every hospital visit with patients. Since transitioning to remote visits, it's given Benzel and Loki a chance to connect with patients and hospital staff. The FaceTime visits also made Benzel notice the physical effects of masks that healthcare workers are forced to wear. I see masks doing the damage to the nursing staff, doctors, social workers, because everyone, custodians to doctors, are all required to wear it, Benzel said. She thought of ways she could help those experiencing the issue and came up with care packages called Hero Healing Kits. The kits, which have Loki's face on them, include products like hypoallergenic potion for irritated skin, packs of gum to help with dry mouth, dedicated powder to help with skin irritation, Vaseline, chapstick, and tea and coffee packets. Each kit also has a thank you note with messages of appreciation for hospital staff during this time. With the help of her neighbor, Benzel has put together about 1,400 kits so far, and medical students have raised $300 to $400. The kits have become so popular, a medical student in Philadelphia also started the Hero Healing Initiative there. Benzel has also expanded and has created kits for neighboring hospitals. The kits were also a way for Benzel to give back to the medical community who stood by her when Loki recently had to undergo ACL surgery for a broken foot, which required cash up front. I didn't know how I was going to come up with that kind of money as a medical student, Benzel said. The hospital staff at UMMC suggested I do a GoFundMe, and the whole surgery and physical therapy ended up being covered by donations within two weeks. They did that for me when I was down, and I know the people there are going through a hard time now themselves. I wanted to do what I could to return the favor and show them how much I care about them and the UMMC system, she added. Now, with the help of her dog Loki amidst the coronavirus pandemic, she's hoping it inspires others to give back. Loki is truly an amazing dog, and it's been such a blessing to be able to spread her personality and share it with the hospital system as a whole said Benzel. This podcast is hosted on Anchor.fm. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. There's creation tools to allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute the podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Our next article is from Newsweek by Saren Morris. Read by special guest Eva Noblezada. SNL's Michael Cha pays rent for everyone in the building his grandmother lived in before she died of coronavirus. Saturday Night Live star Michael Che said he will pay the rent of all residents in his grandmother's former building in New York following her death of the coronavirus. On Wednesday, Che announced on Instagram that he would be paying one month's rent for the 160 apartments in the New York City Housing Authority building. It's crazy to me that residents of public housing are still expected to pay their rent when so many New Yorkers can't even work, he wrote. Obviously, I can't offer much help myself, but in the spirit and memory of my late grandmother, I'm paying one month's rent for all 160 apartments in the NYC HA building she lived in. Che wrote, I know that's just a drop in the bucket, so I really hope the city has a better plan for debt forgiveness for all the people in public housing at the very least. Che called upon New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, and Sean Diddy Combs to fix this, asking them to page him. Che revealed earlier in April that his grandmother Martha had died from complications due to the novel coronavirus. In a now deleted Instagram post, Che wrote, I'm obviously very hurt and angry that she had to go through all that pain alone, but I'm also happy that she's not in pain anymore and I also feel guilty for feeling happy. Basically, the whole gamut of complex feelings everybody else has losing someone very close and special. I'm not unique, but it's still scary. Che honored his grandmother during last week's remote Saturday Night Live when Che said to his co-host Colin Jost, As you know, Colin, I lost my grandmother this week, but coming back to work has made me feel better, especially with you. 
He then told Jost that his grandmother's favorite part of the show is joke swap, and that he had emailed Jost a joke to read and encouraged him by saying she would really like this. Jost then agreed to read the joke in honor of Che's grandmother before Che revealed that his grandmother had never watched the show and he just wanted him to do that. When signing off, instead of saying his name, Che said, for weekend update, I'm Martha's grandbaby. Our last article is from BBC. Coronavirus fundraiser Margaret Payne, 90, climbing Solvin on stairs for NHS. With Captain Tom Moore, 99, walking his way to fame and fortune for NHS charities, another nonagenarian has embarked on a marathon challenge. Margaret Payne, 90, aims to climb the equivalent of Highland Mountain Solvin, approximately 731 meters or 2,398 feet, with 282 trips up her stairs at her Sutherland home. Inspired by the Army veteran's 100 laps of his garden, she began on Sunday, and after hitting her target to raise 10,000 pounds for the NHS and a hospice on Thursday, she said, It's amazing! Mrs. Payne from Ardvar first climbed Solvin in the west of Sutherland, aged 15 in 1944. She believes her modern-day challenge will take around two months to complete. It's her way of thanking the absolutely wonderful NHS staff and carers at Highland Hospice who took care of her husband Jim before his death at Christmas. After donations passed her target, she said, I wasn't expecting anything like it. 10,000 thank yous. It's brilliant of all of them, and I feel the NHS really deserve it. They have been amazing. Each day they are risking their lives. By Thursday night, her fundraising goal was at 12,500 pounds and rising. Launching her bid, she wrote on her fundraising page, Here we go. Starting Easter Sunday, three flights before lunch today. Raining and windy outside, but warm going up and down the stairs. Since then, she has climbed several times throughout each day. Despite that, Mrs. Payne said she had never been a hill walker, having lived with knee problems since she was 12. However, she would walk miles to reach the best spots for her true passion, fishing. Mrs. Payne's inspiration, who has become known as Captain Tom, walked 100 laps of his Bedfordshire garden to mark his upcoming 100th birthday. After being featured on local radio and websites and then TV and in national newspapers, the former serviceman quickly raced past his initial target of 1,000 pounds and then a swiftly revised one of 500,000 pounds. By the early hours of Friday, more than 800,000 people had donated a total of more than 17 million pounds. What heights Mrs. Payne can achieve in her own fundraising challenge has yet to be seen. That's it for tonight. Thank you for joining us at Uplifting News Sleep Aid Daily for our two-week anniversary episode. Stay safe and stay inside.